there, there seems to be a confusion between. I mean, they, well, I mean, they, well, I mean, was urgent for the government to, 10 months ago was to enter into a deal with China, and that gave us nothing. And that is why today we still need vaccines. Yesterday, the premiers called on the prime minister for transparency. They wanted access to all the documents, the deals with the pharmaceutical developers. Why will the government not release those procurement contracts so we can find out why for 10 days the supply has run dry. The Honorable Parliamentary Secretary, Madam Speaker, transparency and responsibility, accountability are of prime importance to this government. We will provide the most information, as much information as possible. We have been doing that all through the pandemic, and we have cooperated with the provinces and territories, of course. But given the global competition, fierce competition for vaccines, revealing certain contractual information about specific uh, suppliers could jeopardize our vaccine supply. They could jeopardize our supply chain. We will continue. The Honourable Member for Carleton. Today is not a day for statistics. It's a human tragedy. We have 213,000 families who've lost their paycheck. That's the number of jobs lost. In the U.S., they've added 50,000 new jobs. Our unemployment rate is the highest in the G7, higher than the EU, higher than the U.K., higher than the U.S., and the, higher than the average of advanced economies. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, with respect to the job numbers, I would point out to the member opposite that there is a global pandemic that is impacting different parts of the country and different parts of the world. I noticed that the recent job losses were concentrated in provinces that have been hit very hard by the second wave. The good news is projections from private sector economists continue to suggest that this will be an excellent year for economic growth with a projected average at 4.4% growth in GDP. What's important is during this time of need, the federal government is going to continue to be there for Canadian households and businesses, no matter what it takes, no matter how long it takes. The Honourable Member for Carleton. The Member's right. It is a global pandemic. It exists in the United States, which has significantly lower unemployment and added 50,000 jobs last month. It exists in the uh, UK, in Japan, in Germany, across the G G G7. It exists across the advanced economies, but every single jurisdiction I've just named has lower unemployment than Canada. We have now lost 213,000 jobs in just one month while the rest of the world is returning to work. Why do foreign workers get paychecks and we get credit card debts? Parliamentary Secretary. Madam Speaker, the short-sightedness of the member opposite is absolutely astounding. With great respect, if we wanted to have a short-term uptick in employment rates, we could talk to the premiers and say, don't put in place public health measures that are designed to protect the lives and well-being of the people who live in our communities. But we know that that short-term game would do immeasurable damage to the long-term economic interests of our nation. We are going to advance supports so provinces can do what is right to protect the health and well-being of their residents, and we can prevent economic scar so we can rebound from this pandemic on the back end stronger than any developed economy Prime in the world. Minister tell Canadians if he's expecting a reduced or zero shipment from Moderna on the week of February 22nd. It was going to be a massive challenge for companies around the world to develop and produce a vaccine that didn't exist yet when we were signing these contracts last summer. That's why we signed so many different contracts for so many potential doses for Canadians to ensure that we would be able to get get Canadians vaccinated, regardless of challenges or, yes, fluctuations in the week-to-week -week delivery program. 